Okay, welcome back. This is going to be uh, part three of the rabbit cage build. As you can see, I'm cutting out the doors. I just cut out the door on the big condo here for the buck. I'm going to cut out the doors on the remaining five. They'll be a little bit smaller because the cages are smaller and I have to leave room for the um, their feed tray and uh, you know the water, stuff like that. Also, what I'm going to do <clears throat> after I get the doors cut and I uh, get the doors put on, these parts that I'm cutting out from the door, obviously I can't use them as a door. They'll be a little bit too small. What I do with these is I'll form and shape um, hay feeders that I'll mount onto the outside of the cage and I'll stuff hay in there for them every day. So I'm trying not to have any waste. Uh, so those will be used. The sections that are cut out to make room for the door will be used to make hay feeders and then I'll make the doors out of what I had left of this uh, one inch by half inch. Plus I went and got another roll today because I did a little bit of research and since I'm trying to make these cages with as little wood as possible, hopefully no wood, uh, most people make their nest boxes out of plywood and it's a box that you have to sit in there every time you're uh, your doe is fixing to kindle or have her babies um, but then you know the babies and sometimes even the grown rabbits like to use those nest boxes as litter boxes after the babies are born and then you get urine and feces soaking up into the wood which is going to stink and the whole reason for me doing a completely all metal self-supporting cage was not to use wood because I don't want wood to stink so it just kind of it defeats the purpose to go through all this work in metal and then use a wooden nest box okay so I've done some research and I found several rabbitries that use what they call drop down nest boxes. And the nest boxes are actually made out of this one inch by half inch wire. And what they do is they cut a hole in the bottom of the cage and they mount the nest box underneath the cage. So it's always there. It's just like a, it's like a drop down, uh, you know, 10 inch, 8 or 10 inch deep a uh, little nest or hole basically for the rabbit to uh, build her nest in and have her babies. The great part is it's wire mesh. It's not wood. Um, there will be, you know, a substantial loss in um, straw and hay, obviously. Uh, but I think it's worth it in the long run considering, uh, well, when they build the nest, hopefully they'll, they'll kind of, they'll tuck it in there really good so that the, the straw and the hay... Uh, all of it won't fall out. Some of it will, obviously, but in the videos I saw, they maintained it pretty well. Um, the good part is it's easy to clean, and that's a, a big plus for me, is because I don't want any <coughs> chances of having diseases or anything like that. So, I mean, we've already established that, you know, if, say, if, say uh, the doe here on the end, I want to breed her with the male, I'll pull her out of her cage, I'll bring her over, I'll stick her in with the male cage, with the male in his cage, while they're doing their thing, I'll come over here to her cage with a, you know, a, a, a brush or whatever I want. I'll squirt it down with a, you know, diluted bleach water, give the cage a good scrubbing, or maybe even come out with a pressure washer or a hose and just, you know, spray it down real good and keep the metal clean and disease free. So by the time her cage is good and clean, by the time they're done doing what they do, and I'll put her back in. And I can do that for, for all the cages. Just pull the rabbit out, clean the cage real quick. The good part is with the drop-down nest boxes, <coughs> I'll be able to do the same thing with that after the rabbit has her babies. <coughs> and after I wean them, I can just, you know, come here underneath it, spray it with the bleach water, pull all the old straw and all the old whatever's in there out, spray it, we'll give it the bleach water, brush it down, blast it off, and it's, you know, it's sanitized. It's good to go. There's no wood, no chance for disease and all that good you know, that, that crazy stuff. I don't want to mess with any of that. I want all steel. I want you no know, wood or as little wood as possible. I may end up having to use some on the roof, but the rabbits can't. If they can pee on the roof from their cage, man, I'm going to make money selling these babies because they're superstar rabbits. But I'm going to take you guys along for the door cutting, um, the putting the doors on. Uh, I don't, I've only got four latches. I've got to order some more feed troughs. I've got four latches, but I'm not in a rush for the feed troughs because I don't have any baby rabbits to put in here yet. This is, this is planning ahead for, you know, uh, three or four months down the road when I start having babies. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll take you guys along for that. I'll take you guys along for the design and the build for my uh, drop down nest boxes. 
but I will not be able to mount them here um, because I don't want to put any weight on them. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll once this cage is finished, I'll take it outside to its location. I'll mount it. It'll be up off the ground on the T-rails, and then I will install the nest boxes after the cages are hung. That way there's, there's not going to be any weight on them or anything like that because I don't want to destroy them after I spent this time building them. All right, so uh, stay tuned for more. Okay, now as you can see, I've cut out the door openings on all the cages. And here are the parts that I cut out. The first thing you need to do is clean these edges up. And by clean them up, I mean get rid of these. Now once you clean all four sides up of all of them, I'll bring you back and I'll show you how to fold this thing and turn it into a basket that you uh, can feed your rabbits with that will be attached to the outside of the cage. Actually, it will be attached to the outside of the door. Okay. Now, after you trim up the edges on all these pieces that used to be part of the cage that are now going to be our um, hay feeders, what you want to do is trim up all four of the edges. Then on whichever side you decide to choose, what I, I want it to stick out from the cage about three inches. Okay. So what I do is I come over one, two, three inches and cut this out and clean it out, but I also go up one, two, three inches, okay? So there's a three inch square here that'll be useless. Same thing on this side. And then what you're gonna do is fold this side in. You're gonna fold this side in along the three inch line, which is right here. You'll fold on this line right here. And the same thing on this side, you'll fold on this line right here. So these sides will go in. This bottom on this line, which is three inches up, you'll fold it in. Hang tight and I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. Okay, here we have our formed basket. There's the bottom where the three inches were cut out. Fold these up, then fold them in on both sides. Then grab your bottom and fold it up. Boom. Now I will use some Z, uh, or the J clips on this to hold it sturdy. And what's going to happen is when the door is mounted on the cage, this will mount to the outside of the door, just like that. And then you shove hay down in there, and they can feed from it all day long. Obviously, you're going to need to cut a hole, and I'll show you that when I get the doors mounted, so they can feed on the hay. But that's how easy it is to use your scraps to make a simple, easy hay feeder. Okay, this is your finished or your completed uh, hay or straw feeder that will be mounted to the outside of your door. I showed you how to cut it, I showed you how to fold it or how to bend it. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to put it together. Once you bend it and fold it over, it just takes four J clamps. That's it. Just four J clamps right on the front, holding the three pieces that you folded over together. And now you've got your basket that will mount to your door just like that. You shove hay down in, and they're good to go all day long. Uh, now, just to cut the doors, get those mounted, and mount these on the doors, and we are off to the races. See you soon. Okay, I've got all the doors cut, and I'm about ready to place them on the cage. What you need to do when you're um, when you're cutting your doors, um, since you, I'm using a J clip, so I'm going to hook them right here like a little hinge. I'll show you in a second. Um, but you want to have an inch overhang at the top, at the bottom, and on the side. You want to try to have at least an inch overhang. Um, that way you get good closure on the door so there's no gaps for the for the rabbits. Um, but you're just going to take your J-clip pliers and just do four, five, or six little clips on here to make it a hinge where the door does this. And I'll bring you back. Okay, as you can see, all the doors are hooked. They all open and close freely. I put five J clamps on each one, and you can see how they pivot really nice all the way open. Next step is to mount the uh, hay feeder right here on the door. They're all on, there are the hay feeders. I'll go ahead and mount those and bring you back and show it to you. Okay, welcome back. All of the hay feeders are now attached to the door using just, um, each one has four on both sides on these small ones. Plenty secure. Now I just got to come through here and cut out an opening so the rabbits can get to the hay. 
And then all you do is just when you walk by in the mornings or at night or whenever you want to do it, just uh, shove a bunch of hay down in here. Uh, all these are done. The one on the end here, the bachelor pad, obviously it's, it's quite a bit bigger because his cage is bigger. So his uh, hay feeder is a little bit bigger. So I used, uh, actually I used five, one there, there, and then one in the middle down here at the bottom to make sure there was no gaps. But, uh, so all the hay feeders are attached. Now I just got to cut the feeding holes. And then after that, I will start building the drop down nest boxes. Move this thing outside, get the hutch actually built and go from there. Okay. As you can see, well, it's kind of hard to see. But the feeding holes have been cut into them. What I did, I cut um, one, two, it's three inches high, probably about six inches wide. So it's it's plenty big enough for them to get their, their face in there to get to the hay. They're all the same size except for the big cage on the end. It's the same height but quite a bit wider because uh, it's going to hold a lot more hay. Um, that's it for that. The next step is to design and cut holes in the bottom for the drop down nesting boxes. I have to decide where I want to locate them. If I want to put them in the middle or if I want to offset them a little bit. I think probably what I'm going to do is, is maybe offset them to the side. That way there will be more flat space from the run around on um, versus putting it in the middle and they just kind of kind of got to run around it uh, so what I may end up doing is offsetting it over here to one side opposite of the feed the feeder and then put it on on one side I don't know I may do it in the middle probably not probably gonna offset it to one side I got to set the design and make the cages and get them ready to attach uh, once everything's done and manufactured the last thing I'm gonna do and I suggest you all do it otherwise you're gonna end up with scars like me is to get a grinder or a Dremel tool. I'm going to use a grinder. And uh, you're going to want to go back and grind all these edges that you cut. Because these things are like razor sharp. Like seriously. Uh, I've got scratches and scrapes all over me just from making this thing. Uh, but you wanna, you're going to want to either find something that you can cover this with. Like a molding of some type. The problem is the rabbits are going to chew it. They chew everything. Uh, so you're going to have to eventually either replace it or... Uh, yeah, I mean, you're going to end up having to replace it. I've seen several cages, and they use this cool plastic little molding around the inside of the doors and, and all these areas that you need to grind down. But the rabbits are going to chew it. Uh, so what I've decided to do is I'm just going to grind them down as smooth as I possibly can. And your main areas are going to be the, the entryway where you're sticking your hands in. And here where the rabbits are going to be feeding, you don't want them to cut themselves. Um, so you're going to want to go through and grind down and smooth out all the surfaces as best you can where you cut uh, For your safety as well as the rabbits because uh, you don't want them getting a little cut on their foot or something And it gets infected and you end up losing your rabbits uh, So very important last step is going to be to grind everything down get it as smooth as you can Or if you choose to use some kind of plastic uh, molding you can do that uh, I'm going to opt against it Again, reason being is that that's the reason I'm going with all metal. Um, I want my cage to be a one and done type thing, which lasts for decades. Uh, and, you know, all this is galvanized, so there's not going to be a rusting issue or anything like that. Um, I'm going to uh, try not to use any wood or any plastic anywhere near where the rabbits can get to it. Just so this thing is pretty much self-sufficient for... Years and years and years and years to come, so I don't have to replace anything on it. Uh, other than possibly, you know, maybe some of the roof or something, if it is wood. Uh, other than that, I'm going to get to designing the nest boxes, and I will bring you back when I have finalized the design and where I plan on locating them. Okay, I've flipped the cages over to where the bottom is facing up, and I've cut out the first hole. It's hard to really see, but this is the bottom, all right, and what I decided on was a 10 inch wide. 18 inch long nesting box now this is going to hang down probably 10 inches uh it'll be a, just a, a cage that hangs down here probably a good 10 inches below so you gotta you got in your mind this is the bottom so this will be the nesting box i'm going to um actually reuse the section that i cut out i'll make it the bottom of the nesting box so all i have to do is uh, add the sides to it and 
we are good to go. Uh, I will bring you back once I've uh, constructed and uh, once I've made the first nesting box. Like I said, I'm not going to put them on here because it, it's going to be really hard getting it out of the door uh, with these nesting boxes hanging below it. I'll install them once I get it in place outside. Okay, welcome back. I just completed my first nesting box. Here it is. It's 10 inches deep from here to the bottom. It's 18 inches front to back and it's 10 inches wide. Um, it will sit like this on the bottom of the cage when it's done over this hole so the rabbits can drop down in there and make their babies and do, do whatever it is they want to do. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, making that nesting box was probably the hardest thing I've done so far because you've got to manipulate the wire. There's a lot of cutting with your snips and, and doing your J clamps. Um, I could have literally built all five nesting boxes out of wood in the time it took me to make that one. But now that I've made it, I'll never have to replace it. There's not going to be any maintenance on it except for, you know, squirting it down with some bleach water to keep it sanitary and clean versus having to replace your wooden nesting boxes every year, maybe every two years if you can stretch it, but they stink and they're full of urine and, and all that stuff. Plus, it's going to take probably a whole roll of this wire to do all five nesting boxes, and a whole roll of it is, I want to, I want to say it was like 16 bucks, maybe 18 bucks. Call it $20, okay? It'll take uh, at least two sheets of plywood to make that out of wood for all five of these. And a sheet of plywood right now is like 60 bucks, okay? You do the math. Not only is it more economical to make it out of metal, it's cleaner. It's, it's going to last a thousand times longer than wood. I will never have to replace these nesting boxes, you know, unless some freak of nature happens. And, uh, yeah, it's once these things are built, and hung they're they're there for the duration I can raise probably hundreds of thousands of rabbits in this system without ever having to do any maintenance other than hose this whole thing down with bleach water uh, hit it with the pressure washer and it's it's sterilized it's sanitized and it's ready for the next round it's not that easy if you're using wood wood soaks in the urine it holds those diseases and all that stuff yeah I want the worst, the one thing you don't want to do is get a sick rabbit. It'll get all your rabbits sick and they all die. I don't want that stuff. I want this as sanitary as possible. I want to raise good quality meat for my family and and to sell and to give away. And uh, that's why I chose to do it out of, out of metal. It's taken me probably five times as long to do it out of metal than if I did it out of wood and just stapled hardware cloth to the outside. But once I'm finished with it, I don't have to do anything else to it. It's there. It's done. It's over. A little bit of bleach water. No maintenance. Rock and roll. I'm a big fan of easy. That's why I did my potato experiment. You know, plant them deep one time, leave them alone, let them do their thing, and it seems to be working pretty good. Um, no maintenance, nice and easy, over and done with. That's it for now. Uh, I'll try to get the other uh, four boxes done, and then I'll bring you back later. Uh, actually, it'll probably be, this will probably be all for part three. I'll do the nesting boxes and finish things up in part four. Thank you. You guys like and subscribe. I appreciate it.